Hey everybody, in this video I just wanted to show you something I do when I see a cool CSS effect that I am kind of curious about how they did it, is I just try to reverse engineer it. So I'm on the sales page for this course called Beyond CSS by Kevin Powell, he just like released it, or released the preview edition this week. And I haven't looked at this at all yet, but I like this effect here with this kind of curved underline. He has it in a few spots here, he has it like under his name there. And I was curious about how he does it, so I haven't looked at this at all. I'll show you how I kind of try to, I'm going to try to reverse engineer it in real time. So so span and it's just an after element let's see is the after element background image okay so he's got an after element with a background image that seems simple enough so let's try that real quick and we'll just give it a class called greeting I'm gonna make the font size really big just so we can see the effect And I'm just gonna make it a sans serif font. And then we'll just do a, uh, we'll also do a text align. Well, it's already, it's a, it's a span, so it's actually not gonna, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, take up the full width of the parent. So what we can do is just put on our body a display of grid, and then a place items center the height, 100 viewport height, I'll center it. The reason that did that is because before the body was only the height of the letters, and then so we had to put an actual specific height on it for it to take up the full height of the viewport. Okay, so we can say greeting. Let's just get an underlying block here first. Every pseudo element needs a content for to display. If you're just using it for a decorative item, you can always just leave the content blank unless you need to put some text in there. And we'll say width 100%, height five pixels for now, background color, uh, let's go steel blue. And I'm wondering if I'm missing something here. There's that. I'm gonna do a position relative on the greeting to have it calculate the 100% now is relative to the greeting tag as opposed to the parent. So it basically makes a new like containing context. Anything besides position static creates a new context. We're basically just making a container. This is a container for absolutely positioned element. And then on here, now we can do the bottom zero and the left is zero. And that'll move it underneath. And let's make the height 10 pixels. Get more on that. And then it's the best way to steal this. We can just steal the source. And that look nice. Okay, and then we'll just say background image. Put that in. And then we're gonna inspect it to make sure, see if it's loading it or not. It might be not be loading it. Maybe it's the background position possibly. There it is. So yeah, we had to change the background position, I believe, because I think it wasn't displaying it because it was displaying the top part of this image, even though, and we want it to display the bottom part so that we needed to center it in there. And it's still cutting it off a little bit, actually. So let's, what if we say top? I have to look up top, bottom, center, and it goes right through the middle there. Let's say the width is 130%. So we have more of the curvature there. I think we can use a background size. I have to look up background size. Contain, cover. Let's try contain. Uh, it looks squiggly because I think it's repeating it over and over again. That's what it did for this one. So let's do contain and then background repeat, no repeat, and see what that looks like. So it's not just about re recreating uh, the exact image. It's also about just kind of messing around with the different attributes and this in like kind of figuring out like what's doing what and how they behave. That's where you really actually learn. Uh, background repeat or no repeat. So yeah, it only contained it there. So what if we do a background size cover? Well, that looks a little better. What happens if I switch this to the 100%? There we go. So now we get the full curvature of the image and then it adjusts to whatever size our text is. So we can say, hello world. And now you see it'll make it bigger. So it kind of moves along with the different things, which is cool. Let's see what, what happens if I put a bunch of text. I wonder what would, it would just make it bigger. Interesting. Okay, so you'll see here we'd have to, if we wanted to make it underlined, at first it's really thick, but we can make it a different height here. If we increase the height, say 20 pixels, let's go 30. But now it's actually kind of moved up a lot. So what if we do background position, bottom, about top. Center is the only one that seems to work, but let's take, let's inspect this real quick. I think it's because the height, okay, yeah. So if we didn't want it to cut into the text so much, 
we would have to position it actually out a little bit lower than the bottom. So bottom, it'll be uh, negative 20 pixels. Let's try that. Yeah, and we just have to mess around with these values. 30 pixels, so you're giving it high to 30, so. There's that. Okay, cool. So that's kind of just a fun way I like to, to learn new things. Whenever I see something interesting, I try to first reverse engineer it and then recreate it. I suppose maybe it would have been better if I tried to recreate it before I looked, inspected the actual code, but either way, I learned a little bit about the background position property and it kind of refreshed my memory about how some of it worked. I still don't fully understand why it has to be position center, but now I know that that's something that maybe I could dive into another day if I wanted to, but we got it working here. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.